Oh. You join me. I'm currently going to film again on location. The park. No golfing. You think I'm okay? So, I'm gonna go film in the park. Random location, I know, but it's all about not sitting in your car when it looks like this. So, am I gonna be sat on the grass? You will see in a minute. So, hello. Welcome to another video. So, yes, sat, sat on the ground in a park, but it's important to not be sat in your car. So, what have I learnt being lactose intolerant for two years? I'm going to break this down into a few points, four or five. The tips and tricks and then exactly what have I learnt to being lactose intolerant. So, so let's go. So, first of all, why did I do a test in the first place? So we've got to go back to we've got to go back to my first ever jump into powerlifting, and whenever I first started training heavy. I was having one good out of five sessions because my belly was just so sore and for people that don't know what happens if you eat something that you're intolerant to uh, your body can't digest it you have think of chronic diarrhea and everything that comes with that pretty much the same so really bad stomach cramps really bad bloating you feel sick you're hot you sweat it's just if you could not eat the thing that gives you that makes you feel crap, you would do. So that's why I did a test. I was thinking of competing, and because I was thinking of competing, I needed to get good, consistent training for 12 weeks for a peak. And it just, I knew that it was something that I was eating, but I couldn't pinpoint it because it didn't always flare up that night. It could have been the following morning. And then you've eaten tea and you've eaten breakfast and you've had supper. So you're like, well, which one is it? So I decided to do a test. Me and Jamie did an intolerance test. Um, and you send off some hair. There's a video on my channel um, sending it off and talking through it. And you get a detailed PDF coming back. And they use like a traffic light system. They use um traffic light system. So green, yellow and red. Red, you're intolerant to it. Best to not eat as much or cut it out of your diet orange if you eat a lot of oranges or orange foods or foods that they have classed you're slightly intolerant to a lot of them in a meal then you'll have a red green you're okay so it turned out that anything that involves lactose so milk cream cheese butter but also i'm allergic i'm not allergic that's the thing intolerant and allergic i'm not allergic but any the two enzymes in the milk as well i was intolerant to so getting lactose free still can make me have an upset stomach and gluten anything that's got gluten in it so anything pasta pizza bread bread buns for a burger so this falls into completely different makes life difficult which i'll get on to but i then cut out everything and I had really good training and I did a really good competition so I've got points on my phone that I want to refer to so I'm gonna put you there zoom in so I can read you so what have I learned in the, in, in the two years since doing the test so gluten and dairy intolerance is more common than I initially thought. I feel that everybody is intolerant to something at some threshold. You might be able to have a glass of it and not have an effect. You might be able to have a cup of it. You might be able to have 10 litres of it and not have an effect. But someone isn't, you all, you all there is a stat that some people are intolerant. You, one person is intolerant to something, whatever that may be. It's important to read the labels carefully and thoroughly. I've come up a cropper to this where I've 
not read the label, recognize the packaging, that is vegan, that is gluten, eating it, only just realized by the end of it that actually, oh, that's got milk in it. And then I'm um, really struggling. Cross-contamination can be, can be a major issue here as well. So using the same bowl, the same knife, the same spoon, that can have effects because you only need traces of it if you're severely intolerant to it like I am. You only need traces of it. So, I have like a list of safe restaurants or restaurants that take my cafe for instance, my cafe will do gluten, will do vegan, will do dairy free. We have um, vegan butter and we have gluten, dairy free, wheat free bread and we can sort breakfast out and everything. We can make that. I find there's a lot lactose free because this is the main issue, lactose free. You can go vegan. If you go for vegan, then there's a very good chance that a lot of places will do vegan. If you have vegan, then there's no animal products in it, no animal products in it, then there's no milk, there's no lactose. Because I'm lactose and gluten, take for instance, going to a pasta restaurant. Most pasta restaurants will do a vegan or a vegetarian pasta. Most will do a vegan pasta. But I can't have the gluten. So therefore I can have the vegan pasta, but I can't have the pasta that's in with the vegan pasta dish. I'd have to have gluten free. So then you've not only got to find a restaurant that does vegan, you've got to find a restaurant that does gluten free. And there's not many out there. I'm currently cutting at the moment. Currently um, coming to the end of it just before holiday. I think this video comes out while we're on holiday. But I find meal prepping is mega important. I eat the same thing every day and that doesn't give me flare ups, it doesn't make me doesn't make me have um, anything in my diet that will give me an accident or flare up because that pizza that I talked about a minute ago, I was I had an upset belly for a week. An upset belly has other branches. If I've got an upset belly and I feel sick, I then don't want to eat. If I don't want to eat, then I'm not fueling the sessions. How, currently how I'm feeling, being so depleted, like a week and a half out of going on holiday. I'm low carb, just to try and get in as best shape as I possibly can. I sometimes find if you're trying to cook something, like I said, it's made me try things that I would never normally try. Experimenting with um, alternate ingredients can be fun. It's also, my family are amazing with this. Absolutely amazing. Because I get so embarrassed when you go out for a meal and you have to be one of them. Can I see your allergen list please? Or, or um, um, like little things like going out for a Sunday dinner. Quite a lot of Sunday dinner places put butter on the veg. Can't have it. It's a little simple thing. Take Sunday dinner. Unless you're going to really buy specific things and you're going to change the whole aura of the Sunday dinner, so therefore I can eat it. You need to get lacto-free butter or vegan butter. Mashed potato, can't have normal butter in it. Can't have normal cream in it. Yorkshire pudding, I can't have. Gravy, I can't have because I'll have wheat in it. Next point is, what do I miss the most? So, this has completely changed what I class as a cheat day. Pizza in the past. Papa John's used to do a pizza with, um, I think it was chips or wedges and on the side of it, cookie dough and ice cream. So, I miss pizza. Can't, can't have the dough, can't have the cheese. What's the point? Because I've always, I always think back to a Mighty Meaty at Pizza Hut. I always think back to Domino's I always, I'm always comparing it to something if I've always been intolerant then we won't have a such an issue. Ice cream. So this is one where I'm very fortunate at the moment there is a video coming out, I think it's next week or it's come out, a, sweet, a company called Swedish Glaze, it's a really nice vegan ice cream to the point of I've in the video taste tested people, Some they're not on camera but try this, would you say is it vegan, is it not vegan and they can't tell bread so when I was a kid I was so into bread my mum used to take me to town give me bread bun and butter and I used to be happy bread bun can't have butter can't have gluten-free bread it's 
just not great. Some nice ones out there, some tolerable ones out there, but it's just not great. Pasta, gluten-free pasta, but it's not as nice as normal pasta. And cakes and pastries, donuts. These are all things that I now can't have and I don't know of a gluten-free, I know of vegan donuts, but gluten-free donuts, I, I, I don't know of any. How has it affected my training? So, for the main, the main point of this, it's made my training better. So, no flare-ups or very little flare-ups with me being so um, confident with my meal preps. I don't have many flare-ups now because I eat the same thing every day. But the biggest issue it's made with training is the protein aspect of it. There is a video out on my channel where I lacto versus lacto free and the difference in protein content is huge. But going to say, I'm getting covered in little things, going to said pound shop or a discount shop and just buying a load of cheap protein off the shelf, it's probably whey protein, but it, milk can't have it. And I'm yet to find a nice vegan protein. So I want to find some vegan um, protein bars that are really tasty, but to find an, a vegan protein powder just not found one so that's the biggest thing that it's affected me is finding cheap protein so the last point here is in a dream world in the future i might become not lactose intolerant fucking hell just get the shite out of me if i could have an afternoon off or could just have a meal off and actually eat lactose and I know there are lacto blockers out there but it's the milk that I can't have not just the lactose the two enzymes in the milk that I can't have so you'd have to go down the vegan route and therefore it's not the same so if I could have one thing there was one thing that I could eat my mum's rice pudding when they do it at Christmas and I have a vegan version, it's just not the same, it's just not as nice. And the final point, if you're thinking that you're intolerant to something and you are struggling, do a test. They're not expensive, they're like £20 and they're reliable. And then if you get results and it comes back that you are intolerant to something, then you can go to the doctors and you can do get a blood test. They put it on your arm and dab it and stuff, or they can do blood tests. But I was so um, happy with the results of mine that I've not done that because I've cut out what it said and I'm, I'm so much better. So yeah, it's crap. It really is bad. I don't like it, but you have to put up with it. You have to get on with it. It is what it is. I'd much rather not eat the thing than have trouble with it. But there are so many times during the days that I just wish I wasn't lactose intolerant. But anyway, lactose intolerant two years on. There we go. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm going to put the drone up. Bye.